Hey everybody, it's Charlie from Swift Contractors Corner. Look at that. There's already people in there. Man, that is cool. You guys are like on it today. You're like, what's going on? What's going on? There's people coming in. So uh yeah, here we are. It is uh Tuesday, March 8th, 2022. Yep, I looked at the dates right. It's right over there. You guys can't see it, but it's just out of the screen right right there. Anyhow, anyhow, whatever. So uh yeah, here we are, and look. It's not just me. I got the Jeff Morton with me as well. Hey. Hi, Jeff. Hi. You're welcome. I can't help myself. What do you want me? What, look, do you actually Dude, expect anything so, different from me? So this show was so important that I did 20 miles an hour through a Ross distribution center today. I like to get it. here on time. Wait, wait. Don't admit that out loud. That may be bad. I'm not sure. I think your, ter your contract's terminated. Yeah, I'm going to have to. That's it. You're out of here. No more, Jeff. We're done with him. Just no, kidding. the lady at the gar shack just said, uh, yeah, here's the rule sheet. I don't care. I mean, she literally said that. So Right. Like, okay. A little scary, though. Uh, that DC, the big one in Houston. Right. Was empty of trailers. That's freaky. At a Ross distribution center. Mr. King, I don't know what's going on with that. If, anybody, yeah. if anybody's got any info on that, I'd be interested to know. It almost looks like Kmart did at the end there. For real. <laughs> Hi, Ken. Hey, Michael. Good to see you. Glad you're here. Facebook user. Which one are you? Come on. You got to tell me which one you are. Just, just because we we need to know. Dennis Lewis. Glad to see you. Good evening, gentlemen. Jeff, Charlie. How are you doing? I almost, almost made it, almost to Kinley, North Carolina. Okay. Good. Good. Nice. Jeff looks tired. You know what? Jeff's been working. What's up, Sean? Uh. Kenneth? Yeah, I literally just parked the truck five minutes before the show. So yeah, yeah. Oh, you must have heard the things he was telling me on the phone. He was like Phil Florin, Florin, Phil trucking. I'm just saying. Paul Phillips, what's up, buddy? Craig Hutchinson, good to see y'all. Hey, look, look, look. Before I do this, I, 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 I want to bring someone in here that you guys aren't used to seeing on here, and I can already see her face getting all. Oh, God, they're going to do it. Here it comes. Oh, my God, it's going to happen. Don't put the coffee cup to your mouth, my love. Here we go. It's going to happen. Look at her. She's all shy and stuff. Look, look. That's my baby. Look, if any of you guys want to make a phone call and talk to us live on here, uh, that lady right there, this beautiful woman, the one that I love for so many years right there, she's there waiting to take your guys' calls. I'm just saying she's ready for it. She's ready. She wants to take some calls or not. Whatever. You guys decide, man. You guys do what you want to do. Baby, <laughs> I love you. Thank you for taking calls. Even when these guys won't call you. Babe, you, you can say hi. I know, on. right? Say hi. Say hi, baby. <laughs> hi. 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 All right. All right. I'm going to throw you back out of here. And uh, she's gonna be sitting there waiting to take calls, guys. So uh, if you if you're there and you want to, you know, drop a phone call. Oh, look, I could do this. This would probably help. You don't know the phone number. Guess what? I've got one for you. It is right here. Eight one three live SCC eight one three five four eight three seven two two. If you want to call in and talk to us, or <laughs> hey, you know, you can just call and tug on Rosie's ear. She may like it. I don't know. Watch out, she may hug, hang up on you. She won't, really. <laughs> unless you're crazy, and then she will, but whatever. But all right, I'm going to do this fuel surcharge thing because that's what I know everybody's been waiting on. You know, Some of you know it already, some of you don't. And uh, yeah, let's do this thing. Uh, this is going to be fun. I, I'm excited about this one. So here we go. We're doing our little fuel, fuel surcharge thing. This is going to be, oh God, I'm so excited. Oh God, I'm excited about this week. Here we go. So, the magic numbers this week, guys. The uh, average national average diesel price went up 0.745 cents, up to four dollars and almost eighty-five cents. The West Coast Pad Five went up a 0.682 cents to a whopping five dollars and thirty-nine, almost thirty-nine and a half cents. Brings our fuel surcharge to 0.604 cents. Holy hell! That's a change of 0.133. You guys need to understand the significance of this stuff. We're going to get into that. I really want to talk about this because I've been geeking out since yesterday. Like, y'all just don't understand. 
blowing up Jeff's phone. I haven't blown up anybody's ear that'll listen to me. The West Coast fuel surcharge is at eight cents because the gap is only 60 cents different. So I'm going to take this out the screen and we're going to talk about this stuff, you guys, because I think this is important and I need to keep you guys calm. You guys need to know what's really going on. So let's do this thing and uh, have some fun. So how happy are you right now, Jeff? I actually smiled once. Right? He did. Look, look, look. You can almost see a smile cracking up. There it is. There it is. We got when, when it. Char when Charlie told me what the bump was, I was all giggles, which is not like me at all. But, you know, uh, Charlie, oh what, 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 what I always tell people, you know, math sucks because I hate math. Right. But it doesn't lie, man. So, uh, so we, you know, I understand people are a little apprehensive right now. Uh, fuel i mean good gosh i'm in texas right now and i'm looking at a flying j with a pump price of four dollars 99 cents in texas right. in texas y'all in texas you know that, so. that's where they make the oil and all that but anyway so i mean this is uh i i'm just gonna i, I i'm gonna i'm gonna make you squirm a little bit here charlie so this is even like gotten up to brett stewart Right. I mean, he's he's got guys calling saying, dude, I'm going to turn in my truck with this fuel price. I can't handle it. Tell them why that's the wrong way to think about it, Charlie. Because the fuel surcharge, it, look, worse, if you're getting less than six miles per gallon, and I can't imagine any of these new trucks are doing that. If you're only getting six miles per gallon, you're still only paying, uh, what was it? Sorry, I had my magic numbers and I lost them. Uh, the fuel surcharge alone is going to pay you three dollars and sixty-two cents. So you shouldn't be paying more than about a buck seventeen for a gallon of fuel. Look, look, seriously, um, I, I I can throw numbers at you all day. Six and a half miles per gallon is going to the surcharge is going to pay you three ninety-two a gallon. Seven miles per gallon, four twenty-two a gallon. Seven and a half uh, miles per gallon. 453 a gallon or 453 is what it's going to pay you on the fuel surcharge. That's damn near the, the national average. And if you're at eight miles per gallon, which most of you honest to God should be at with these new trucks, $4.83 is what the fuel surcharge is paying you. Look, if I just got my truck worked on because I, ha I had some serious fuel mileage issues and boy, did I get it done at the right time. Stop, Jeff. I know we've been. He's been yelling at me for months to get this to work done on the truck. So Charlie bugs me about my tires. I was. Oh I've been God. bugging him about his overhead since I bought those stupid tires. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. And and so so my average went from like you know high sixes, low sevens, and this week my three Phillips for the week were eight point one three. 8.12 and 7.97. One of those was a, was with a Milo's backhaul out of Alabama all the way back down to Lake City. That was a 7.97. So if you guys aren't getting eight, change what you're doing. Something's wrong. Seriously. And and I yep. know you guys don't like hearing me, but Lord, you know, so so Facebook user said, you know, I've seen 530 a gallon, right? So so really, I mean, I mean, I, I really want to dip into this because I want you guys to to see. What we're talking about. So at, at 5.30 a gallon, so it's a 5.30. I'm sorry, I'm playing with a calculator over here. Minus, and what would I say? In, so let's take somewhere in the middle ground. Let's let's say seven miles per gallon, right? Uh, 4.22.8. Uh, minus 4.228. I know you guys can't see this, but I'm doing it off the screen. Even at, at that rate, at seven miles per gallon, with the fuel surcharge, you're only paying a dollar seven for a gallon of fuel. Yep. I, look, I, 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 oh my God, 8.5. Look at that. That's amazing. That's where you guys should be. Um, look at that. Craig Hutchinson, man, my hero right here. Look at him. 62 miles an hour, 812 miles at half a tank, 9.9 .9 miles per gallon. Uh, Facebook user, 8.5 miles per gallon. Uh, this other Facebook user, uh, I get 7.7, 7, I get 7.5, but I run 72 miles an hour though. Look, you should be getting, you can get way more than that. All you got to do is slow down. Well, just, just do the math. If you slow down to 62, you're at eight and a half miles per gallon. 
that's just physics. And I don't know the last time I saw a swift load that required me to go that fast. Right. That's the thing. You know, I mean, Charlie's been, Charlie's been running 55 for the last what month now. Yep. Like, like a crazy person. I even got Rosie locked in at 55 now and she's digging it. Well, I don't know if she digs it, but she pretends like she does because she loves me so terribly much. And, and I mean, okay. So Facebook user, how do you find that your truck says 11.9? Don't believe your truck. Just don't believe your truck. I'm sorry. Uh, trucks are wrong. Uh, very rarely are they dead right. But you could go to a, a place like Let's Truck that that most of a lot of us use. Um, that, uh, it's washing out. Yep, it's washing out. But Let's Truck will 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 give you a place where you can track your real actual fuel miles for every mile run, not the dispatch miles or any of that mess, because that's not telling you your true numbers. Uh, if you go to Let's Truck and download their their gauges app or the the fuel gauges app, excuse me. Um, it's free. It doesn't cost you anything. I, we have any, we have a video on the YouTube channel that'll show you how to set it up for the first time and get it going. So seriously, yeah, no yeah, excuse. you know, what I, I've, uh, I've interacted with a lot of some of you guys on, on Facebook and just right now I'm looking at my phone, my lifetime average on this truck since, since I picked it up from IAL with 35 miles on the odometer, right? 7.92 miles per gallon. Yeah, now, you so. got to keep in mind that I've spent a year on crap tires that are sucking a half a mile per gallon out of my tank. Yep. So there's that. My 30-day is 7.65, but I've been idling a lot, so I can account for that. Uh, my 60-day is 7.69, and my 90-day is not coming up. Uh, also 7.69. There you go. So I'm... So I'm, I'm steady in my knowing that i idle a lot because i've been running up in canada in those you know 10 degree temperatures uh so i can account for it in several ways i can account my idle time the winter blend fuel guys right um matthew was working with a guy recently that um was running up by him up in upstate new york and he's putting that winter blend fuel in and then putting the anti-gel in on top of that and Boy, his fuel mileage was just, I almost jumped off a building myself, Charlie. Yeah, you know? right? <laughs> it was just terrible. That winter blend fuel will get you. And, you know, we have to deal with it for about half the year. Right. You know, so. so I'm going to share something here that I think will help people kind of get an idea of what's going on here. Um, let me throw this up here. <clears throat> Jeff and I are off to the side here for a minute. Don't need to see my face. I need that to be bigger. How do I make that bigger? Let's make this bigger. So this is my last uh, few fuel ups. Um, Holy I crap. Show, yeah, I know. I know, right? Can you see where it went tragically wrong on me there? Yeah. I'm just saying. Here, let me add a couple more in there just for fun. So... Where it well, really well, started to go wonky on me was down here at this 7.7, 7, and it really started crapping out on me. Most of these lower ones I can account for for driving 70. Honestly, God, you know, I was whatever reason mm -hmm. I was balls to the wall. I that shouldn't say it that way, but you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. After this 7.7, 7, you'll see it just start plummeting. This 807, I want you guys to understand some weird stuff happened here. This 807 was a complete fluke. Don't understand why it happened. It shouldn't have happened. It just was proving more issues were actually wrong with my truck. Um, and and I, I can't account why it was do, why we came up with 807. Truly, I can't. There's no reason other than my overhead was so far out of whack that I got lucky on one run. And then the 7.42 was actually on track to be the 6.22 number for the end of the load. But I got mm -hmm. the truck fixed after about 100 gallons. And when I filled up here, that next 36 gallons, I brought the fuel mileage up from, it was 6.45 to 7.42 in just that 36 gallons. Yeah, That's and I want to point out here too that Charlie's operation is a much better test for this than mine. Right. Since I run all 48 states, Charlie is running just the one region right? out of Lake City, Florida there. So he's got a lot of the same terrain. The loads are about the same weight. 
all, all the, he's got a lot of consistency in his operation that that most of us aren't going to have. So when you see his numbers, you might say, "Well, I've never seen that." Well, th- maybe you're maybe you run the Rockies for a couple of days and then you run the flats, so you you'll see those swings just from that. So, so these three Phillips right here, we're all running from Lake City up to Tuscaloosa, to Birmingham, and back, or up to Birmingham to Fultondale and back. And this one right here was actually a, a you'll see. It. So I filled up in Tuscaloosa, and I'm gonna, I'm actually going to explain something here. I didn't need to buy this fuel or this fuel. Mm-hmm. I purchased this fuel because that's all the room that I had on in the tanks. And this was the cheapest fuel in my region for what I was doing. And I got this the same day or no. Yeah, I got this super early and then this on the way back. I only took this because I wanted my top. I wanted to top my tank off before we, we started next week. I was, I'm basically, I have a full tank of fuel minus six gallons sitting on the yard right now. And, and people are like, dude, what's wrong with you? I spent $525 on fuel that I didn't need to spend, Mm -hmm. but I'm banking on the prices going up. You guys like, seriously, like I, and they went up today and I'm pretty sure they're going to go up tonight and they'll probably go up tomorrow. And I'm not going to have to fuel again until Friday on my way back from my Thursday load. So I'm going to have right. that whole tank locked in it at the rate that I got. So, you know, you know what I mean? I, I, I just don't know a better way to explain that. Well, I think, uh, you know, I did the same thing today, Charlie. Um, I, I started off in Dallas and here's the thing is I looked forward to what the fuel prices were down here in, in Houston and they were about 15 cents more expensive just today right. down here than they were up there. And so I, I decided I'm going to, I'm going to top the tanks off real quick. Well, it was only 36 gallons, but that's 36 gallons. I don't have to pay an extra 15 cents a gallon for. Right. Plus I'm doing a reset right now. So the next time I run is going to be on Thursday. What are the prices going to do in the next two days? We don't know. Right. Yeah. So- Charlie and I were talking and, and we're either geniuses. Well, okay. So here's the way he put it guys. Either Charlie's a genius or I'm an idiot, and we both did the same thing. Yes. So I, I don't know how that dynamic really works. I just wanted but... to make it me winning, and that, that's all I apologize. <laughs> but look, look, I was completely wrong. I told Jeff, I, I was being very conservative, and I said that I was being conservative because I thought the average was going to spread out further over the week. Mm-hmm. And when it hit yesterday and I saw the number, I, I just lost my mind because I really didn't think that much was going to hit on that th- this weekly average, and that's what... You guys need to understand something, Kate, and I, I'm going to slow down here for just a second. I, I, I'm going to geek out on you a little bit and bear with me, you guys, because I, I want you to understand the significance of this and the history of what we're dealing with right now. The The highest diesel prices we have ever seen on, on the historic record on the EIA site is $4.71. The highest national average, $4.71. It took 14 weeks for it to go from $4, from $4 up to $4.71, 14 weeks. And we were, people were screaming back then. So many people went out of business because of the fuel prices. Like ridiculous amounts of trucks were lost during that 14 weeks. And then the nine weeks it took for it to go from 471 back to four dollars. Mm-hmm. So we're talking about a massive uh 14 and nine, that's uh 23 weeks. 23 weeks to go up and then come down. We beat that entire jump, that 14 week jump. In a single week, we had an 18.15, I think it was 18.15% increase, 74 and some odd cents. It's in a week, in a single week. So to put this in perspective, this, the largest percentage jump I could find in our history was not actually in 2008. It was in 2005. We had a 12.37% jump. It only jumped 34 cents in that week. Uh, five weeks before that, there was an 11.89% jump, which jumped it a 0.308 cents for the week. In between those three, there was a decrease of uh, almost 6% and then an increase of 2.42%. 
but but and that was in 05. I, I wanted to get some time to go back and figure out what happened in that little five week period. And I just didn't have the time to do it today. Today's been kind of crazy because I've been geeking out. Um, and then and then we we flash forward to today. And and I just want to make sure I'm saying the right number here. So bear with me for a second. You know, it, it's 18. Yeah, it's 18.15 percent, 74 and a half cents in a single week. It's unheard of. It, yep. it, it. This is one of those things you can actually say it, and it's true, and it's you can't argue it. This has never happened in the history of the EIA tracking service. No. Yep. So what's going to happen from here? We don't know. What do we want to happen from here? We want I'd to like go to, up, man. I, I, I want I, I want seven dollars. That's my call. Seven dollars. I, I want yeah, I want to see seven bucks. I'm I'm not gonna lie. I, I you know, a lot of people out there are like, holy crap, what's wrong with you guys? So here's the reality of that. Like Jeff likes to say, wait, come on, Jeff, say it. Dr drop your cereal reference. Oh, oh yeah. The price of cornflakes is going up, man. There you go. You can bet on and that. that all goes to us. And I started saying that back in 08 because my dad uh, when I first started this whole thing. Um, so I was what I started in 07. So I was about a year into it during the 08 crisis. Right. Um, so my dad was asking me about how are you doing with fuel? And I said, well, I'm doing great. Did you notice that your cornflakes went up two cents? Right. That goes to me. <laughs> and, and this and, is the reality and, of it. And, um, uh, there was a question there I wanted to to, to to do directly. Facebook user, if this fuel price keeps going up, do you guys think Swift will raise your pay per mile? Hang on, let me let me find that question because I, I want I want it to it's be the done. third one. It's the third one down from the top. Okay, there you go. So, Facebook user, if the fuel price keeps going up, do you guys think Swift will raise your pay per mile? No. Okay, so. I wanted I'll to bring this short up answer. and uh, and, uh, and address this directly. They already did. That's what the fuel surcharge is. Right. The fuel surcharge is variable based on fuel prices. So you get a we've gotten a raise every week for the last ten weeks. That's that's what that is. Um, our base rate has nothing to do with what they pay us for the fuel reimbursement which is another way of saying fuel surcharge. You know, uh, other companies, what you'll find is that if a company, let's, we make a buck 15 for the long haul, right, Charlie? So buck 15. Yeah. Which would you rather have? Miles plus. Which would you rather have the buck 15 plus the surcharge, the way it's sitting, or would you rather have a buck 20 with a surcharge that's not keeping up with fuel prices? Because there's a bunch of companies out there, I promise you right now, uh, I was talking, who was it? I was talking to someone earlier. Was it you? Or I, was, was it I was talking to a Landstar BCO the other day. And you know, I had this Landstar fetish, right, guys, right. in case you didn't know. Every time I get pissed off at Swift, I'm like, I'm going to Landstar. Screw it. But here's the thing. They, they, okay, so controversial here. They do a percentage and a load board very well. Uh, but here's what people don't realize. Landstar advertises in their recruiting materials that they pass through all collected fuel surcharge to their right. ACO. And That's ask them how many collected. of them get a fuel surcharge. I've talked to guys over the years and they're like, dude, it's like maybe one load a month I'll get a surcharge. Of course, I also talk to guys that get it a lot, but they're doing they're doing contract freight. Because you know, all of a, all of all of our companies, we have contracts. And those contracts that are a year or more, Swift will negotiate a fuel surcharge for themselves in that contract. That's where our fuel surcharge comes from. On spot market freight, you don't necessarily get that. It's an all-in rate. Right. And so you have to be be really on the ball and say, oh, shoot, well, <clears throat> holy smokes, man. Fuel just went up 74 cents this, this week. Uh, I get... A lot of these guys write those old Peter Bills, Charlie. So I'm going to say five right. miles to the gallon. Right. And I better build that into my pricing. They may or may not be able to negotiate that. 
and right now from from what we're reading on on, you know different Mm. groups and things like that these broker rates are coming in super low they're not adjusting for the fuel they're like i i I, we're jeff and i were talking about a little while ago that they're simply holding on to whatever it is that they're holding on to and and oh hey so facebook user hey charlie jeff I'm a 8.29 30-day average, 7.97 60 average. I run Tennessee to Wisconsin, 43 to 46,000 pounds on a used less truck. Those are numbers I can dig. Those are numbers I can follow and believe right there. So here's my question, though. Uh, 30-day is looking really good. 60-day still looks looks good, but not as good. What changed in your operation in that amount of time? I and if you. the answer... If the answer is nothing, then we have the, tr- the the discussion Charlie and I have been having for the last six months about what's wrong with your engine. However, they're going in the right direction here. I'm gonna I'm gonna wager. I feel like if I had to guess based on numbers, they slowed down. But because they've gone up for the thirty day. Oh, I'm looking at it backwards, aren't I? Yeah. The 30 day is is better than the 60 day. So yeah, you're probably right. You probably slowed down. So, so let's let's take Jeff's assumption because Jeff's that way sometimes. Right. I, I see what I want to see sometimes. I'm just like everybody else. Right. If that and number was reversed, if his 60 day was lower than his 30 day and nothing had changed, we got to look at the <laughs> engine. Right. Um. So we hear guys all the time say, "Well, I get better fuel mileage at 70 than I do at 60." Okay, well, there's something wrong with your engine then, or you're geared wonky. Right. Uh, we we worked with a lady uh, not too recently, Charlie. It was, what, almost a year ago now. Yeah. She had this truck with this just weird gearing that nobody had ever seen a Swift before. Yeah, it's a fascinating <laughs> gear ratio, like seriously. But it was made to, to run like those flat areas and really get really good fuel much at a higher speed. Mm-hmm. It just was, but it was such a fluke of a truck that when she tried to climb hills or things like that, it just ate her up. She had mm-hmm. no power, no gearing, no no mechanical advantage to help her get up those hills with, with those lower gears because they were such tall gears. I mean, she got on the flat, man, and she was killing it on fuel mileage, but she also ran a lot of uh, that Northwest area, uh, Salt Lake, Wyoming you know, Oregon, California, that area. Which, so that truck was doing her no favors on, on fuel mileage at all. Yeah. But, hey, she loved the truck and she kept doing it. She knew what she was losing and that's fine. I mean, that was a decision she made. And, and you know, that that's that's what I mean, that's just where, what it is, you know. Um, hey, hey, Todd, I'm going to address your question real quick. Tucker Todd said, uh, did Swift start their load board yet? We started it uh, February of last year. It's not officially released to the masses yet, but that's a quick, easy answer. So yes and no. How's that? Uh, we are, have been adding a bunch of uh, new members to that test group where, where we've got, uh, I, I think we're maybe even pushing, I, I know we're well over 100 now in, in the test group. So there is a lot of people on that and they're working on it. Uh, they still have some automation issues in the back end. And we hope to hear uh, something in the next week or two is what we're hoping again. You know, I know we say that a lot, but, you know, it is what it is and we're moving on. Hey, Todd, if you're still there, I'm curious, what is your guys' uh, surcharge over at Dart this week? If you if you know that information, uh, if you could throw that up, that'd be awesome. If not, you could tell me to pound sand, too. I don't mind, man. Whatever. It is cool. Uh, let's see. Dennis says... Uh, Oh, yeah, Dennis, that's exactly what we were talking about. We were talking about uh, Let's Truck earlier, you and I. And that's exactly what we were talking about. So now you've seen that. Uh, Robbie Mead, hey, buddy. Paul Phillips, I was thinking the same thing. Uh, Blackbeard, I want to get on the testing. Just give him a call, man. Seriously, give a reach out to to Brett Stewart or Omar, Coretta, or Jerry, and they can get you on that. Uh the load board needs more loads. Absolutely, Alan, it does. Uh, right now, we're, we're running the, the night logistics stuff, and it's just not populated with enough stuff to, to really keep me satisfied or moving anything. Well, you know, I, I, I can address that a little bit, uh, talking to Brett recently. And, you know, it's all about that automation thing. 
that's what they're focused on is getting it automated so we no longer have to call the planners to get things actually planned on our truck and uh it's proving to be a larger hurdle than i think they thought it was going to be and that's just what's going on once that's done though i think we're we're gonna be in business and todd i i, I don't mind man look so so yeah you're right uh it, they've been saying for a long time and, and you know every time brett would say hey we're gonna put a hard date on it which is something he actually won't do now it's kind of funny he tried to put a hard date yep. yeah we're like <laughs> brett stop please stop the, yeah i don't know man I, I i think you're crazy saying a date because there's always that you know we're, we're dependent on programmers and we've gone through several batches unfortunately we had a huge uh drop in in some it stuff I mean, we lost, hell, we lost our IT team at Swift for a while. That was crazy. And, oh, so, and then further, he says, uh, he's a bad one to ask. He's on the OPI board and negotiate his own rates and pick his own loads off the load board. But is there, is there a fuel surcharge though? Do you guys get a fuel surcharge even on that load board? I'm just curious. Uh, I, I know that with uh, our iteration coming that we'll still be getting, you know, our, our, our fuel surcharge built into that so that'll be cool for us uh, uh blackbeard so uh so trucker todd's thing though there um you know that's exactly what i was talking about if he's running a, a, a load board like that right yeah he, he's got to know right what his, what his numbers are and that's what we keep on every time we get asked about I want percentage or right. this that. You got to know your numbers first, guys. He's doing well well over there because he knows his numbers. And if he has that ability to negotiate, he could build that into his rate. You know, um, it, it's just a different level of business, guys. Uh, and you got to you got to you got to realize that. And look, I, I'm going to do something weird. I'm actually going to plug Trucker Todd here. Trucker Todd has his own YouTube channel. He where where he discusses uh, Dart systems and and that sort of thing, and that's cool. I have no problem with it. I've you know I, I watch uh, some of his stuff on on a fairly regular basis, and he puts out some interesting information sometimes. And he he gets some people that just yell at him. It's great. They don't do it on camera, of course, but but he gets some crazy email from some some of the people that that watch his channel, and they're like, "Oh, you're crazy!" And then he, he defends it. He'll put up his numbers and and he'll back it up, you know. And and he here, mm -hmm. contractor's corner, man. Numbers, numbers is everything. We don't care what you say. Show us the numbers. The numbers are what means everything to us. So, and Blackbeard, uh, it's the owner operator planner number. If you don't have that. Uh, look in the group and I'm sure you can find it there. If not, hit me up and I will send it directly to you, brother. Uh, Robbie Mead, I'm late for the party. What's the fuel surcharge this week, if I may ask? Uh, to back up for just a minute. Robbie Mead, it is 0.604 this week. 0.604. So, yeah. Like Alan said, there you go, Robbie. 0.604. So, yeah. So, so seriously, guys, uh, Brett's been getting a ton of calls from people saying, oh, my God, I'm going to have to turn in my keys because the fuel prices are just so high and I'm losing my my, my tuchus on this. And and I don't understand it. You know, it, it, how are you losing? I, I just don't get it with the fuel surcharge being so high. I honestly don't get it. You know, uh, so we got we got Todd back. He said, uh, it depends on the broker. I have approximately 50 brokers to choose from, and some of them show fuel surcharge and some don't. It doesn't affect me because I just figured in my rate when negotiating. Exactly. See, there and, you and, go. And, and that's exactly what we used to have on our command and echo system was, you know, we negotiated the rate that, that we had. And I, I personally loved that system. I did. I, I was getting some phenomenal rates back there. And, and it just was what it was, you know. I mean, I, I don't know. I, honestly, I, I I don't know why it went away other than some contractual problems, and you know I'm hoping that at some point when when the full iteration of this comes out, will actually be to a closer system to what uh, Todd is working with now. Um, and yes, Facebook user, it went from 0.47 to 0.604. Yes, that is correct. Um, and yeah, you know, you guys. Uh, the fuel card that we've been promoting out, out here recently. Uh, 
and oh and <laughs> i got sidetracked sorry um <coughs> so the fuel card is helping out a lot because we're seeing uh discounts way underneath what what we're actually paying uh, or what the fuel surcharge is covering um leonard the east regional dedicated fleet is it, it's a dedicated deal man you you would honestly have to uh, reach out to those guys and and see what the difference is i i know that there's a big change i know i know their base is like five cents higher than our our base at 801 plus it starts at 120 and goes up from there you know if that's what you yes, want to do whereas i'm whereas not going I, up to new york i'm telling you right now whereas whereas i have the the opportunity if you want to call it that to not run in california and not run in new york those dedicated guys that's just what they do they run that new england area and so they're stuck with those those fuel prices and, and that headache. And they and actually so run all the way down. They, for it. Yeah, they're running the entire East Coast on on that regional thing. Uh, Dennis is actually in that fleet, and he's he was running today from South Carolina up to uh, Pennsylvania. I can tell you right now, I'm not willing to go up there, so it, that's just my deal. You guys can reach out to those people and 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 I mean talk to people. Yeah, like you said. Uh, uh, Dennis said that that regional fleet is uh, 120 to 150 spread on on all bands. Um, I'm gonna go back to Todd here. Sorry, guys, what you're saying is very true. I get guys messaging me all the time with six months experience wanting to do what I do, and there's a lot. Of, they still don't. They need to learn. Exactly, Todd, and, yeah. and and that that's what that's what Jeff and I have been doing for years is trying to educate people. And I know you do that on your channel and that's why I dig what you do sometimes. Um, you know, <laughs> I, I, well, I, I don't watch it all the time, so I, I don't know what he's doing every week. I mean, I, I try, I try to tune in when I can. Um, I spend a look, you guys, I spend a ton of my free time, not driving, working on contractors corner stuff. You guys know that, you know, I, I if, if I got a three day work week in the truck, I'm doing four days, at least three days here on Contractors Corner stuff. Rosie will absolutely make me drop my phone. No phone for the day, and we will go do stuff out there. So, and, so, and another thing. Swiss Steel Storage is among the best that I've seen uh, among companies. It would not surprise me if it's even higher than darts. And and look, and I appreciate you saying that, Todd. I, I know you're not trying to smooth or anything like that, but they they have they have one of the most phenomenal fuel surcharge programs that I've seen. Uh, we were I was talking to someone earlier today, and and the company that the guy was referencing was was talking about, you know, hey guys, don't worry about the fuel going up. Hey, your fuel surcharge went up three cents this week, and I'm like three cents. That's ours it. Jumps, ours jumped thirteen cents this week. And so I was like, holy, that's just insane. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and uh, a couple of things to point out real quick, Charlie. Um, yep. the, the the information that Charlie's putting out every week, you can get that yourself. And yeah, right. your, and the schedule, what is it, Schedule C? Schedule C. In the contract is where we're getting the fuel surcharge from. It's contractual. Yep. So if, right you there in your get, if you get the the number from the government, on what that on what that uh the way you say that the government i also say america anyway america um oh, if God, you get I'm that number from you. the government the the department of energy publishes it every week um and you go to your schedule c you'll see exactly what your fuel surcharge is for that week it's and it's not secret it's information not, right i mean we 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 uh with uh, fuel surcharges getting above that what what's the highest charlie that's in schedule 655 C right now? is where it caps out right now right but swift has already calculated it out past that it's just yes. they never thought they'd have to use it right so <laughs> it is ready you guys I, I know there's a magic uh, another sheet to to add to that i don't know if we're supposed to talk about it or not but i just know that there is a fuel surcharge calculated much higher than the 655 number yeah and so it, it will be put out when in well, it's going to be put needed. out because I it, it's going to be needed. I, I I'm 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 banking on seven bucks like Jeff. I, I'm hoping, you know, it's well, going to suck just, for the economy. Just, um, there's so many articles out there with people way smarter than us analyzing what's going on. And, and they're they're calling for seven dollar a gallon gasoline. By right. the end of uh, I think it was uh, May. And, and, you know, diesel, well, it, diesel costs more than gas. So there you go. 
and gas broke their the the national average record, record high today as well. They're uh, four eighteen, I think. Yeah, yep, and the previous record was four eleven. So that there's some things happening, and there's a lot of people unhappy. And the current administration, any part of the administration, is not making things better right now. For and, and look, I'm mm. not talking politics. I'm just simply saying that things are not going to get better very fast. You know, like yeah. I said, the, the last high spike took nine weeks to come out of just to drop back down to four dollars. Yep. You know, who would have thought we'd go up 74 cents in a week? Could we drop 80 cents in a week? Sure. I don't see it happening because I think people are going to hold on to that. that I think those companies are going to hold those profits for a while. Dude, if if if, if fuel gets up to 10 bucks, I'm retiring in a <laughs> right. I, I, well, because Charlie and I figured it out, and you know, we're really close to the break even already. Like we're not paying anything for fuel. Right. If you're up there, like some of the, some of these guys above nine miles per gallon, I encourage oh. you. I'll, I'll give you. A, I'll give you a homework project, and don't do it based on just the week. Because if you feel the way that we're teaching you how to fuel, you're putting more fuel in the tank than you need for the week. So that's not a really good way to do it, but look at look at the last thirty days. Add up what did I what did you spend on fuel? It's X. So right. let's just say it's like thirteen hundred bucks. Mine was like thirteen forty eight last week. And then add up what your fuel surcharge was for the week. Um, because of the way I fuel, um, I pay. I ended up paying three hundred bucks for all my fuel this week. But that's right. but I've got full tanks right now, Charlie. Yeah, I front loaded next week because I'm anticipating fuel cars going up. And that's exactly what I did. I put five hundred and twenty-five dollars of fuel in my truck yesterday that I did not need to. To uh, my week is over. The pay period right. ends Wednesday. I'm not going to drive again until Thursday, and I won't need to fill my truck until Friday. And I put five hundred and twenty-five dollars of fuel in my truck. It is full, minus six gallons. Right. So figure I filled up up in Houston. It's only 250 miles from 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 Dallas to Houston. Sorry, I filled up in Dallas. So at eight miles per gallon, that's not even 50 gallons, you know, that I burned coming down here is closer to 30. So I have 170 gallons of fuel in my tank. I didn't need this week. Right. That's a lot of money. <clears throat> so if I hit if I if I was running empty right now, I would have ended my week with Swift. I'm pretty sure I'd have to do the math to be sure, be sure. But my fuel surcharge is more than what I paid for fuel if I hadn't gotten that extra 170 gallons. Right. But that 170 gallons rolls over to next week. So here's the magic so, nine mile per gallon number. Ready for this? Using this week's fuel surcharge of 0 0.604, if your truck is running nine miles per gallon, the fuel surcharge is, fuel surcharge is paying you $5.43 and a half cents per gallon nice done did any did anybody other than california people pay that if they were using the es card this week i i, I don't think so not with not with the yes advantage card no you I, know, can't, the, I, the, I can't see it the highest price i paid was that that mistake i made early in the right. week because I, I had to fuel in california and those of you that are on the group saw my rant on that and yeah. uh, <laughs> You know, that was good stuff. Thank goodness for a couple of people that talked me down because I was getting emotional and I don't right? like that. <laughs> so Facebook user, how much fuel is a team driver doing? So when Rosie and I run closer to real team type miles, we do between 120 and 140 gallons a day. So, you know, calculate that times the days that you want to work. I don't work seven days. I don't work six days. Hell, I barely work three days a week, most weeks. So there you have it. You just You're just going to have to do the math there and uh, go for it. Alan said uh, PA's over five even with the ES card. With the ES card, there you go. So that, it's, it's getting crazy in a couple of those really uh, high dollar markets. Yeah. And uh, somebody, too, and I noticed this going through Texas, there you go. Charlie. Um, you guys want to make sure you're checking fuel book, too. Because there's some Absolutely. places, you know, like like the quick trips here in Texas. <clears throat> we're actually beating ES by about 10 cents. 
so you you know you if you're gonna take this seriously and and run your business and make the most out of a bad situation that we're having right now use both and and just get that the cheapest fuel you can you know charlie and i both have anxiety attacks when we start thinking about mom and pops right but you know cheap fuel you know i mean if 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 you want to roll the dice on that which i i do still consider it rolling the dice and it's just based on my experience with them right. in the past is all it is and you know burn one too many times on, right. on bad fuel but and, you know if you especially if you're running the same region all the time you might roll the dice on one of those mom and pops that's like 10 15 cents lower than es and just see what it does right just make sure you have some extra fuel filter and you know how to change them right yeah yeah <laughs> it's not that hard right but, yeah look rosie but, knows how to change a fuel filter i've seen her do it i'm just saying it's hot my bad i apologize so uh robbie Meese said uh with the fuel surcharge he only spent 188 dollars for the for fuel in the week nice what is that telling you guys i'm just saying and paul phillips says uh, 140 gallons a day so there you go. Uh, you know, if you guys have any other questions, by all means, throw them up. Oh, 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 Roland Espinoza. Sorry, man. I didn't mean to skip over you. I wanted to come back to you. Uh, when are you going to do a video on how to send your fuel receipts over for our IFTA? I'm trying, man. I am really trying real hard. I, it's it's just a matter of time to, to sit down and, and actually do this stuff. Um, it will be before we have to send them in for next month again. Um if if you need to get it in for this last month, then let me know and reach out to me on on the group, and we, I'll I'll walk you through it best I can real quick. But yeah, so it, like I said, man, if any of you guys want to call in, uh, Rosie's sitting there; she's still waiting on the phones. Nobody's called her. Poor lady. She's just she's there. Numbers right there: eight one three five four eight three seven two two. And she'd be happy to take your call and put a little message up. And hell, she'll just talk to you for a minute because she. She may be getting bored. I see her laughing at me right now. Every time I mention it, she giggles. It's funny to watch. Watch this. Watch. Watch. Look. Bam. There she is. She's giggling. That's how <laughs> it just throws her off when I do this stuff. I'm going to throw it back. Get out of here. Get out of here. So, yeah. But, yeah. And a uh, Facebook user, I made $234.58. Uh, and I'm ready for my next week's run. So, there you go. You know, I mean, look, there, there there are ways that we can be benefiting from this. And truly, the, the key is maximizing your fuel mileage and maximizing your time. It, you know, because if, if you've got plenty of time, why are you driving 72? Yeah. I, I just don't understand it. And you guys can yell at me or whatever. And how do we get the report of our fees we pay for ES? You know, I actually looked at that. And I couldn't figure it out precisely yet. So it's something I'm working on. And as soon as I know exactly, um, one of the things you could do is for now until we sort it out. No, that won't work either. I'll figure it out. I'll, I'll figure it out. I will. I found it. I found it the other day. I Did can't you? remember where it's at, though. But we'll figure it out. <laughs> Excuse me. Because, uh, the reason I was looking for it was because I use ATBS. Right. my accounting service and they need that you know for your taxes you know it's not just what you paid for the fuel but you you can you deduct those fees too right the transaction so, fees and it's a separate cost thing on the taxes i'm not an accountant so i i, I don't want to sound dumb but it's a separate cost thing so and, and like dennis said you know don't forget to check the pilot flying j app for those one nine stops because some of those places are phenomenal seriously um, yeah, I, I haven't seen any of them personally beat because honestly, there's none in my region. I don't know if you've seen any one nines beat the e, uh, ES Advantage card yet, Jeff, or not. No, not yet. But I, I know Dennis doesn't have I, a card. Uh, he doesn't have an ESA card yet. So four seventy. I had uh, the one at, the one west uh, east of uh, El Paso was within five cents though. There you go. The other day. So so you by know, all I mean, means, use know. every tool you guys have. And I'll also point out too that if you are in a situation to where uh, either that one nine is cheaper, or you just need fuel because you done screwed up like Jeff did last week, right? Use the Com Data card if you're shop if you're buying fuel at one of the big five, but it's not in 
ES's network because at least you get that five cent discount. Right. It's something with the Com Data card. It's something. It's better than nothing. Oh, I wanted to. So we had some problems uh, last week that we talked about. On, I have to be. You guys know I have to be careful about which chains I mention. So one of the chains where we get deeply discounted fuel. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, is the one that we get the elevated level of reward level right mm -hmm. i don't I, i'm not sure what this was that was cool it's like a stick about to get me it's gonna get me anyhow so the it, i found out why mine keeps changing back to the base level instead of what they call platinum level you dig beep beep anyhow so what was going on was i was using my es card and fueling up my truck and using my reward card everything's great platinum level and then i would pull the truck up and i would use the uh swift con, con data card and i would slide my reward card again and what happened was that company said oh look he's no longer using the es advantage card he must not be using it anymore drop me back to my my Base normal level. tier the base level and just reset it from there so if you are using com data and the esa card and you happen to be using that rewards card that we're getting the elevated um reward level for either one don't use it with your com data or get a second card to use with your com data and keep them separate Otherwise, it's going to keep screwing up your reward level, and it's just going to be a nightmare because, yeah, it's just going to be a pain in the butt. So I'm just simply not using the reward card anymore when because all I'm filling up is reefer fuel anyhow. And it's like, I mean, at best, a buck fifty or something like that a day, and I, I just not that important to me for the hassle. Mm -hmm. So I want I wanted to throw that out there. So don't use that brand a reward card with your com data if you're using ES Advantage as well. Yep. And hey, Trucker Todd, are you still there? If you're still there, if you haven't checked out this ES Advantage card, I don't know what you guys use to uh, buy fuel, whether you're using Nastic or you guys have some other program. Hey, man, it, it might be worth a look. We got it opened up to any contractor anywhere. It doesn't matter. I think I might even have a link address for it. Sorry for that. This is not great video here. Let me throw that up there. And if, you know, hey, man, give it a look. Uh, I, I know it's 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 not your deal, and and you know what I mean. Um, but what I will say is, you are welcome to use that link. And what it's going to do is, if you sign up for that card, if it makes sense for you, if you haven't seen our video when we announced it, um, they they are some seriously discounted prices. Anyhow, um, if you sign up through that link right there, instead of Jeff or myself or Contractors Corner getting the referral bonus of $50, they're going to take that referral bonus and put it back on your card for you. Mm -hmm. We didn't want to take the money from that. We don't want to make money off anybody like that. So there you go. So Todd, if you're still there, buddy, you're free to use that link and share it with people if you want to, or do whatever you want, man. I, I you know, I know you got a pretty good following out there. So maybe some of your guys could, uh, benefit from that as well. Not sure, like I said, not sure if you're still there or not, but there you go, buddy. Sorry to throw it out there. Um, you know, Roland, I could say that, but that might be too close, so I'm not going to say that. I know we got to be real careful because it's a touchy company. Yeah. Yes. And to answer that question, Robbie, if you've been put back to base, call back and get put on the right level, but don't use your com data with that reward card again because they're going to get tired of resetting us and i don't blame them honestly god I, I i'd be like look you guys either figure it out or ah i don't know what to say that makes sense so real quick too uh so <clears throat> if if you are one of those guys it's like oh my goodness you know i'm, I'm just gonna turn in my truck I, I i can't do this fuel prices are too high before you do that reach out to charlie or me or if you're Seriously. if you're if you are a swift contractor and you're not already in our group join the group because we've been discussing this for at least two weeks now charlie yes how to deal with these high fuel prices 
I mean, if we could just run the math with you and get you to understand how it all works, because that's the, that was the hurdle for me years ago. You know, in 2008, freaking prices are going up and I'm going, oh, what did I do to myself? I guess, you know, this was a mistake. But once I understood the numbers, right. I was like, oh, okay, well, we'll just make more money then. Right. And you have to break the numbers down. You have to do the math or you're re- you're not going to, you're not going to see what we're talking about. Right. You're just not. And we can, we, and we could do that with you. We could just, if, if, uh, if you want to do it one-on-one, that's great. We could do that. Um, I, I've been encouraging people lately to bring it up on the Facebook page because, you know, for every one of you that asks us a question and we go through steps with you, right. There's 10 other guys up there, uh, just observing guys that just never, co- never comment, but they, they'll read through the comments and they'll learn something from that question. they right. ask. And, and just real quick, Robbie, use this email address, esadvantage at expeditorservices.com and send them, you know, tell them that your card was bumped back down to base level, send them your card number and they should get that fixed. That is the email address they want us to use for any of the issues that we may have with the card. It alerts everyone in the team. So it all gets divvied around and and the right people get a hold of it. And Alan, so I'm going to throw Alan out here because Alan has been an amazing person here lately. Alan was suffering of very low fuel mileage because of the truck that he was operating. You know, he came from flatbed, was swapped over to uh, dry van, and with his his uh, mid roof <clears throat> truck, he was getting destroyed on fuel prices. You know, his fuel mm-hmm. mileage was down. You know, sixes, um, sub sixes. It was really bad. I mean, like the best I ever heard him get was maybe seven or something like that. I, you know, I'm not trying to bust him out. This is just what was happening. So we started running numbers with him. You know, we, we ran numbers with him on the truck. We ran those numbers on fuel and, and Alan has made some amazing changes over the last couple of weeks. And he, this turned out to be probably life changing in his business. Yeah. Like he said, six, two to six, six is what he was getting. So from a business standpoint, he went from that truck, got talked to IEL, negotiated a deal where he got to trade that truck in. He's not getting penalized for it. Got into a brand new truck. And now he's getting seven, eight, nine miles per gallon. He was bobtail the other day getting 13. I'm just saying 13 bobtail. Now, okay, this was dash numbers. and, and, And we know that dash numbers aren't right. But that's a very good indicator of the increase that he was getting over pulling a van or or anything else right so Mm -hmm. it may not have been 13 it maybe it was 12 hell maybe it was 14 i don't know i don't know how far his dash is off because those ecms do wonky stuff sometimes um but you know like me with changing or getting that work done it came at the exact right time because right in the middle of all yeah so he he said he's averaging uh eight eight and eight and up to a nine five and and jeff's gonna hate that number because it's a range but what what Alan is talking about is his individual trips, mm-hmm. not overall fuel mileage. But that's fine. Yeah, you know, and, well, and those and, are loaded. You know, eight eight to are, nine five. Th- those are numbers to be a good guide. Uh, eventually, you want to see that one number. But where he's at with that new truck, <laughs> I- I'm pretty sure that he's grinning more than we are, Charlie. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Oh, I, I talked to him today on the phone earlier, and, and yeah, he's all kinds of stoked. I mean, you know, so, and, and look, see, Robbie Mead, here, here's another great example. He pulled a drive in this week from South Carolina to Humboldt, Texas with a mid-roof and only got seven miles per gallon, and that's going by the dash numbers. Yeah, and Alan's up there running the Northeast Regional stuff, by the way, so he's in that heavy uh, uh, winter fuel blend and the craziness that it is up there. And so, and yeah, like Alan said, damn right he is he's grinning ear to ear right now so you know what i mean it it, it's it's it really has been a business changer i don't know if it's a life changer but it's definitely a business changer for him so i mean there is that kind of stuff you know um here let's see i I missed one sorry ken uh just compared es to mud flap es is either matching or beating mud flap on most of the prices for better fuel there you go so i mean use all look we're, we're not saying just use the es advantage card don't don't please don't take that as what we're saying we're saying with this ES Advantage card, we now have another option. 
we have more mm -hmm. tools at our disposal. Um, for, for me, I can tell you that honest, honest to God, with, with the region I run and, and the lanes that I run, ES has beat uh, fuel book hands down every time. Well, you know, well, even like uh, uh, Angel <laughs> on the on the uh, Facebook group, Charlie, I've been talking to him a lot the last couple of days because he's right. running running Nastic, and he just ordered his ES Advantage card. So what I'm kind of trying to get him to do is run them both side by side until Nastic kicks them out because they have that weird thing where you got to buy most of your fuel from them. But right, and and just see, you know, is that three hundred dollar a year um, membership fee producing better discounts or not? I mean, we have a guy that's going to be using both, so that'll be a good test to right. see what's what's what. And, and that is one of the weird things. Well, not weird, but I understand why why they do it. I mean, when, when I was reading the Nastic contract, it said that you needed to purchase was it like sixty or seventy percent that you agree to purchase 60 or 70 percent of your fuel through their card you know and then they have the 300 a year fee and whatever but i mean it is what it is but again it's another option it's something that's out there uh es mm -hmm. advantage does not require you to say i'm going to use it for this much fuel they're like use it once use it twice whatever man uh, it's your it, card it, Run you it. know we have we have guys that have been owner ops longer than us charlie in the group and and what a lot of them have been saying the last couple of weeks is like look we don't i don't i don't care if you get charlie's card right i saw i saw that exact thing the other day yeah i don't care if you get charlie's card just get a card that's not com data right <laughs> and and that's exactly what we're we're not pushing but recommending i i i don't want to i i don't want you guys to think that i'm down on swift or anything like that because i'm not i just think that we have much better deals out there and swift said if you think you get a better deal, then go get the better deal. So that's exactly what we're doing. And they, they look, you know what? We're trying to teach you guys how to manage your money better so that you can get into this, this fuel card or a fuel card that is going to give you a better deal. I don't care if you get the ES Advantage card. I truly don't. I, I think that it's a great deal. I think it's a no brainer. Um, you know, you're getting that 50 bucks back for signing up and they don't care how much you use it. I'm just saying. It's there. It's an option. Uh, mud flap, uh, 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 fuel book, um, the pilot flying J app, you know, looking for those one nines. I mean, whatever gets you the lowest cost fuel at a quality level you are comfortable with, mm -hmm. the quality level of fuel that you are comfortable with. I, I just, I'm clear. I want to be clear here because I'm not okay with some of these small one lane mom and pops in the mud lot. I'm not going to buy fuel there. I'm sorry. It's just not going to happen for me. But if you're comfortable with it, by all means, you do you keep extra fuel filters and know how to clean your system. So that if you don't know how to change your fuel filter, I, I got a video of, on it. That look of shock I had just a few, a few minutes ago, Charlie. Uh huh. I just got the terminal fuel prices message. Yeah. Yeah. So six dollars did that too. Six dollars and seventy-seven cents in Lathrop. Yep, Roland said that terminal prices came in. Uh, they break five twenty a gallon in most parts. So there you go. Yep. You know, um, I yeah, I, I just don't know. Hey, TK, I see you there, buddy. Sorry, man, I didn't mean to ignore you. Oh, I don't know how to turn this one off. Let me get rid of that. So there you go. But but yeah, you guys, seriously, you know, I, I just don't, I don't know how to stress this enough. We're not saying get the ES card and that's it. We're saying use all these tools we have available to us. We're, there's a lot of people out here that are out here testing stuff for us. Um, Jeff and I are, are all about doing tests that will cost us money in, in, oh my God, it hurts sometimes. But we like to share that information, pass it on. Um, we all learn from it. We all benefit. As long as we share the information, we will all learn something from it. And, and you know, it kind of help if it helps you guys uh, not take it in the pocket so bad, then, I'm cool with that. I don't mind spending a little to, to, to share the wealth and, and spread the knowledge. Mm -hmm. If you guys got any questions, throw them up. If not, we're just over an hour here and we, I think we may wrap this up if, unless you guys have something you want to talk about beyond this. Um, like Jeff was saying earlier, if you're one of those guys that is truly really worried about what the fuel prices are doing and, and, and you feel like it's running you out of business, please reach out to us either in the group directly something. Give us a chance. Yep. Let us let us talk to you. Let's let's have a real conversation. This isn't going to be rainbows and puppy dogs and unicorn talk. We will have a legit real conversation. And sometimes it's not pleasant for you. Sometimes it's not pleasant for us.
but we're going to give you facts. We're going to give you numbers. And, and if you can make those numbers work for you and, and change a couple things in your operation that are going to completely change your operation, because if, if the fuel prices are hurting you that bad, that bad right now, it's if you don't reach out, just give up because that's all you're doing. We're, we're trying to give you an out. We're uh, trying to give you a, a way to, to make things better. Yeah, you know, you the last time this really happened for us, Charlie, was that 2008 bump. Yeah. And at the time, I was listening to a guy that people love to hate on XM, Kevin yep. Rutherford. And he made the statement that, look, <clears throat> if you can survive this the, in 2008, you know, we had the housing crisis, we had the fuel crisis, we had this crisis. There was a lot of crises that year. So look, if you can survive this and learn how to make your operation just a little bit more lean so you can just survive, imagine what you will make when things get better. Right. And that's that 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 one piece of advice to me, that's what kept me going for the longest time. You know, I'm like, yeah, you know, I just need to survive. I need to make my house payment. I need to feed my kids. And when the economy bounces back, that's when I'll go buy my toys. Right? <laughs> like seriously. And, I mean and I've been and I've been driving 60 ever since because that's what I learned from that is drive 60 so that you save on fuel. Even right. even uh, you know last year when we were looking at dollar eighty nine and we we're like I don't know if it's actually worth slowing down at this point, I still did it just out of habit. <laughs> so. Hey babe, I'm pulling you up just for fun, putting you on the spot. Come on, Smiley giggles. There you are. <laughs> Tell us what Alan just said. Come on, come on. This is important. What? What did Alan? Six weeks say? until Vegas. Six weeks until Vegas. I don't like the way you, you better say that better. Come on. <laughs> oh God. Come on, baby. Use your best radio voice. Let's go. Ready and go. <clears throat> six weeks until Vegas. Oh, I want to hear. Six weeks until Vegas, everyone. Six weeks till Vegas. Yeah, no. baby. So, <laughs> you look, look, we're not going to make it a big official thing just so you guys know. Um, it, the, the timing's not working out, but we want to do something uh, very soon. Uh, we're we're going to try and put something together sometime in the next few months. Uh, I think we're going to start at West Valley is what Jeff and I were talking about earlier because we can get the iron maintenance guys involved. Um, we're trying to see what their interest level is on it, but I think that they're going to decide that they would like to do it. I hope so. Um, it'll help them. It'll help us. It'll help everybody involved. Um, yeah. So seriously, and Roland, I want to, sorry, I, there was a big thing by Roland here. He said, uh, if anyone hops on the load board, don't get mad. If the pickup or drop-offs don't, get mad there's a reason why it's being tested i went through it over the weekend and nothing matched when i got to my pickup that happens yeah it happens it, it's, it's well, a logistic so thing. pro tip on that by the way because back when we first started testing i think this is still happening right you have to remember that these are swift are not swift loads these are mostly night logistics loads right off of that end so there was a couple of shippers that i went to where they're like we don't have any swift loads i'm like ah you have a night load and there it was and like and there it was and i had to explain to them i almost had to get my old salesman's hat on because charlie you know I, I i did sales for a long right. time and sell that i was there legitimately because they're like i don't know you got this swift trailer I'm like well we've got this new program and we're doing this load board and it's mostly night freight because do you know about the merger and i tell them about the merger <laughs> you know right to get my to get my dog on load right? <laughs> you know? so yeah, and and so yeah, I mean, there, there's some hiccups and things like that that need to happen and work out, and and so, bear with it, guys. But I think we're gonna wrap this up. Jeff, you got anything else you want to throw at anyone? Just do the math, man. Um, I'm gonna hold off on posting my my actual numbers until uh, uh April, and the reason cool. is because I want 30 days. I want the my entire month of March is gonna be all ES, nice. and I want the numbers to reflect that. But what I'll do is I'll, I'll I'll do the math on my truck and show you this is what I paid. This is what my fuel surcharge was. Because I think what you'll find is, again, the week-to-week -week thing, because of the way Charlie and I buy fuel, that could depress a guy. Like, gosh, right. darn it, I still paid over a dollar a gallon. Gosh, darn it. You guys are talking about nine cents, right? Um, but if you take that over an entire month, I think you guys will be happy with the numbers. But you gotta have you gotta have some data. Yep. It's all good. It's all good. And 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 so you know, people need to understand when we come to you with the numbers, 
it's gonna be okay. You're gonna see that the numbers don't lie. It 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 is what it is. And you know, <clears throat> we're we need you guys to run numbers. We want you guys to run numbers. The the more numbers you run, the more we all learn. If you're willing to share it, great. If you want to do a one on one, by all means reach out. Look, yeah. Jeff is a number nut. He loves to run profit and loss statements. I look look at his face. I do. Oh it. my god. <laughs> oh my god, so, what a man. <laughs> So, uh, the, so on that, um, let's truck app, by the way, right. There's a reason that's free. It's not really free. Right. But what they are after is your fuel mileage numbers. Yep. And, and they've been at, since, and... since that app went live, uh, it was right around the 2008 thing that that went yeah. live. They've been collecting data on trucks, fuel mileage. Uh, if you go all in, which I never did with it, you can also plug in all your maintenance stuff. Right. They they uh, they have created this database on how trucks are doing, older trucks, newer trucks. You know, it's, there's a reason why Rutherford. You know, he's got a ridiculous he, database. He's oh got my a, a ridiculous database. He was telling people, "Don't buy a new truck for like what eight years. Right. Don't buy a new truck. Go buy yourself a pre-emission truck. A new truck suck." You know? Yeah, and he he but, saw all the breakdown, all the fuel mods. But because in. of the data that they were able to to get from people from this free app, that opinion started changing about 2018. He started thinking, he started looking at it again with the data, again the numbers, and started recommending new trucks again. Right. So you know, uh, that that, and so we would love it if you guys ran numbers and and kind of fed those to us. Right. Uh, that's why that, that's why I told Angel the other day because he was like, oh, I don't know if this information is even doing any good to you. And we're like, well, it's a data point we don't have without you, dude. Right. Keep posting it. Yeah, they put out that, <laughs> yeah. And, and they put out that cool little warning. They're like, hey, fuel's going to go up twenty one cents tonight. Fuel's going to go up two cents tonight. So, it's it's well, awesome. And, and real quick, because I was kind of excited about what we learned, he and I. So the Nastic card, right? They did not have a big jump of like 21 <laughs> cents a gallon like we saw on ES. Right. In one day. What they did was they spread it out over the week, though. Right. So he saw the same jump. It was just spread out over more days is what right. we figured out. So that was interesting. And Roland, yes, it is illegal to mm -hmm. delete the EF system on the unit. So and. Yes, I'm going to leave it there. I'm just not even going to touch any more on that. Reach out in a private message. We could talk yeah, more if you want have, to. Pe people have gotten in legal trouble for just talking about that. So. Right. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hush, hush. Rose, you got anything you want to throw out there? No phone calls. No. Look, look, you guys. No. She's sad. We closed she's the sad phones now. already. And she's sad. Now I got to yeah. pay more attention to the to the show today. So, that well, was there good. you go. So, next time, guys, if look, uh -huh. don't don't let her be bored next week, guys. She, she, I didn't she's say actually, forward. look, she's actually looking forward to answering phones. It, it makes her a little uncomfortable, but we, we both have been trying to do things that take us out of our comfort level, which we need to do every now and then to grow and further ourselves. Right. <laughs> so, you know, I, look, I went to the store. I, off, I volunteered to go to Walmart today. You guys that don't know me well know that I don't go to Walmart. I, I just don't, I don't like being around that many people because i want to throw punch people look that's real i'm telling you it is real i i see people i pa pa that's what i want to do but i have to fight it <laughs> instead I, I volunteered we ended up not going we went to the grocery store instead which was enough and it was enough for me today and so so there you go it's funny because you know i get into a group of, of truck drivers and, and <laughs> doing this sort of thing and, and groups at terminals and things like that and i'm comfortable with it i don't know why it's just a different group of people and, and but yeah so so anyhow uh rosie is manning our phones week to week you guys uh we'd like to start taking some calls and get some interaction that way i think it'd be fun to do right kung fu charlie at the walmart <laughs> anyhow oh, i just made the whole world shake there i apologize for that you guys but anyhow jeff last, final thought what do you got just keep trucking man don't don't let these fuel prices scare you rosie? You're, you're gonna find that you make more money Rosie, final thought. Emoji. Emoji. I love it when she does that to me. She does that to me all the time. Emoji. And the fact that we say it out loud just makes it that much more fun. All right, guys. So uh, we're going to call it a wrap. Thank you once again for joining us. Like I tell you every week, 
it does mean a great deal to us that you take time out of your week to come hang out with us and watch us ramble and talk about these nerdy geeky numbers and stuff hey, look if anyone wants to geek out on the uh, historical prices hit me up man i've been going through uh the prices from 1995 to present i got every week's fuel prices i'm just saying and i'm going insane and it's been so much fun but till next time dang it i did it the wrong way that's jeff that's rosie <laughs> I'm Charlie, the Swift Contractors Corner, and we'll see you next Tuesday at 6 p.m. Eastern time, like you see us every Tuesday. Thanks for being with us, you guys, and we'll see you next time.